Uh, let's kick off by the 28,000 hectares that I've been alluding to. Some would argue that this is very ambitious, uh, given the, the fact that the average yield uh, of rubber in uh, Gabon yields around 1.9 uh, tons per hectare. I know you're targeting around 2.2 tons per hectare. Tell us about your strategy to get to these levels. So uh, I would quickly rewind back and say this project is about 28,000 hectares. It's in the region called Bitam, where currently the yields are upwards of 2.5. The other existing plantations are yielding in that region. What we intend to do is intend to bring clones, which are newer variety clones and proven clones, and are yielding uh, yields upwards of 2.5, and therefore we are quite comfortable in the yield predictions that we have taken for our plantations. The area that the location that we have chosen, agro agronomically is very suitable for uh, rubber plantations in terms of the number of tapping days that is available in terms of the rainfall and in terms of the uh, overall uh, rain overall deficit period that we get so we're quite comfortable in terms of achieving the targeted yields. Well, I mean, take us through phase one because that is between 2013 and 2019 and you're looking at 4,000 uh, uh, hectares per year that you're planning to plant. There is also uh, a bit of a concern with regards to the uh, acquiring of the seedlings. How do you plan to overcome this or have you already made a plan with regards to this? We know that you have been in discussion uh, with SEAT for quite some time. So uh, this is, Olam is already as a stakeholder uh, in a plantations in Ivory Coast, which is the Sifka plantations. We have been uh, do, analyzing this project for about a year and a half now in terms of preparing the eventually starting the plantations in Gabon. We have done our homework in terms of where we'll source our seedlings from, where how we'll go about our budwood garden. We are quite comfortable in terms of achieving the plantation target that we have. While it will be, if you historically look back, such large number of plantations not happened not because of seedlings but because of availability of capital. In past, rarely you will see corporates investing in large gestation projects of this scale, basically because of lack of capital. Here, because we have ability of capital, we are targeting a 28,000 hectare will be in a phased manner. So we will go up in a progressive manner. So first year we are only targeting 1,500 hectares and post that we will ramp up the planting target. We already planned out from where we will be sourcing the seeds, uh, part of it from uh, Africa itself, part of it from uh, Indonesia, Malaysia. So we are quite comfortable that we should be able to achieve the target in terms of planting, though it might look a bit aggressive. But given Olam's track record of execution in Africa and availability of capital, which typically takes most of the project back, we don't see it as a challenge. The other reason, if you see why most of the other projects have not been able to plant, is also because very weak traditional in terms of the environmental aspect and the social aspect that they follow. Whereas Olam is kind of a leader in uh, putting the best practices in, be in the environmental side or be it on the social side. Although, if you see today, rubber does not have an international standard like you have an RSPO standard for palm. So Olam clearly intends to develop a standard which uh, in partnership with international NGOs which will again further aid in terms of overall faster progression and implementation of the rubber plantations in Gabon. Well, let's just touch on the processing units that you're also planning to invest in quite heavily. Uh, that is going to have a capacity to process around 225 tonnes uh, per day of rubber cup lamp lamps as well. Uh, what is your... Uh, a strategy when it comes to beneficiation down the line because it's not only about the actual product the raw product but also then exporting perhaps the final product do you have uh, a strategy in place for that yeah, so you know Olam International is a trading company we are already have our hands into rubber so it's only that the upstream part which is the plantation we are uh, plant we're getting into now so we have a significant trading capability and as a trading company we have significant uh, trading capability which we leverage to market the product and we don't see an issue in terms of marketing the product per se. And if you see overall the demand and supply mismatch, it's only, there's going to be a significant amount of uh, demand supply mismatch going forward. So in terms of marketing, we do not see significant challenges there. Uh, with regards to the clients that are going to be buying these products, have you already sealed certain contracts or how is that going to work down the line? So we have not taken any contracts yet in terms of selling the product out that we're doing in due course of time. Uh, Mr. Gupta, if we could also just touch on manpower, it's also said that one of the reasons you might just not achieve uh, some of these uh, targets that you've put in place is with regards to manpower and skills. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, the Walloon Tem region is, uh, of course, sit situated near Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea. Are you planning to source skills from outside the borders? 
So for last about eight months, we have been doing a study in partnership with the government of Gabon to identify what is the manpower required for this project. What is the skill set that is required for the project? What is the skill set that is currently available in uh, Gabon? And what is the skill set that we, plan we have to imp impart to people to get them to do this job? So we have clearly identified and mapped the skill gap and now in the process of putting a training program in place for the nationals to be trained. While in short term we might have a situation, we bring experts from uh, either uh, other parts of Africa or from Indonesia to train the local manpower. But we see significant amount of manpower will typically come from Gabon and it will not be so much imported manpower. If you could just touch on the return of equity that you're expecting down the line, I know that number of 94% has come to the fore. Could you give us an indication of uh, what kind of targets you've put from an economic and monetary perspective? Uh, can you repeat the question? With regards to return on equity going forward, uh, we know that you're expecting around 94% to come to the fore. Uh, what kind of targets have you put in place from a monetary perspective? So what we are, what we are uh, cl uh, clear in terms of that this is a long gestation period so it'll take about four years to implement it'll take about four years to implement the project in terms of uh, uh, free cash flows we expect it to be about 155 160 million dollars of free cash flow once it's in full uh, stream of operations uh, mr gupta just very quickly as well we know that this is a joint venture with the government of gabon uh, holding 80 percent uh, in olam of course and then 20 percent is for uh, the gabonese uh, government as well what kind of synergies are you foreseeing uh, working with government going forward in that region so if you see why government is partnering in this joint venture there are two reasons government is very clear that they want to diversify away from the dependence it has on oil today they want to clearly promote agriculture by this joint venture also government clearly sees that we'll end up creating about 5,500 direct uh, jobs for the nationals in addition an equal number of indirect jobs. Uh, government being a JV partner it becomes easier in terms of the fiscal benefit that the government is offering and also in terms of the government commitment to such large project is clearly reflected by them taking a cash equity stake in such a project. Fantastic sir, thank you so very much for joining us and for your insights today.